When you look at the importance of coral reefs, it's out of proportion to the amount of area of the ocean that they actually uh, exist in. In fact, they actually cover less than 0.2% of the ocean surface. Yet at the same time, they support the activities of perhaps 500 million humans. They also play a very important role in your, your my lives in that they are sources of food for people who uh, use the coral reefs to fish off of for, for uh, protein. They also serve uh, to reduce the wave energy that make it onto the shore so that we don't have to build something out there. We don't have to build a seawall so that our beaches and our, our shorelines don't erode away during heavy snow, uh, storms or hurricanes. Uh, they may also be sources of medicine. We know that lots and lots of drugs are based on natural products, that is products that we derive from living organisms. And because of the biodiversity of coral reefs, they may also contain lots and lots of species that produce chemicals that may eventually be useful to us. Now corals are really amazing because they've formed this relationship with this tiny microbe which captures sunlight for them and feeds them. And we're finding out that they have a very important role in the health of the coral animal itself. Much like you and I depend on microbes for digestion or breaking things down, these microbes, when they are normal, uh, prevent, for instance, pathogens from settling down on the coral surfaces and in that way stop the disease from happening altogether. Coral bleaching is this, um, if you like, a, it's a sign of stress. And really what's happening there is that delicate symbiosis between the animal and this tiny microbe breaks down. So when that falls apart, you tend to get um, an escalation of death rates among corals, and in many cases you see a rise of, of coral disease. Over the past 25 years, we've had six major global events of coral bleaching, and in each case we've had a huge loss of corals. In 1998, when we had a very, very intense year of, of coral bleaching, we actually lost 16% of the corals on the planet. Now this, of course, has many of us worried. Why is this happening? When you, when you look at the things that are threatening coral reefs, there's a, a long list of, of potential villains. Now, these villains don't operate in all oceans. For example, if you go to the Great Barrier Reef, right, the biggest threat there is probably water quality along the coastline and things like global climate change affecting coral bleaching. If I go to a place like Indonesia, where I have many more people trying to use reefs, in fact, fishing becomes the greatest threat and water quality doesn't look quite as, as, as bad or it doesn't seem to have the same presence. So it's, it depends on where you are on the planet. If we go to the Caribbean right now, they're getting hit by all sorts of changes. They've been overfishing, very poor water quality, and then they've had these huge bleaching events rolling through the system. And those reefs have gone downhill very quickly. So it's when you get all of those factors impacting together, you get a very, very grim future for coral reefs. If we really care about protecting coral reefs and really want to avert uh, the continued degradation and destruction, it's going to be necessary to do a whole suite of things because coral reefs are essentially dying a death of a thousand cuts. So we will need to set up reserves and protected areas that keep our reefs intact, keep fishing uh, under control. Uh, and manage um, other kinds of human activities such as tourism, visitation and so forth. But at the same time we're going to have to deal with impacts from afar. So we're going to have to use our recognition of the value of reefs as a way to motivate uh, decision makers and managers on land to take necessary steps to keep nutrients from getting into the water, to keep other kinds of pollutants from getting into the water. In the old days when you were mining for coal, and you went down with your mining team under the planet, you took a canary in a cage. And when the canary fell off the perch, that meant the air quality was going down and you better get out of there. I think in many ways coral reefs are telling us, uh, they're giving us an early warning about the severe impacts that climate change will have on all natural ecosystems. So it's not a world without coral reefs, it's a world without uh, cloud forests, it's a world without savannah deserts, it's, it's, it's a very different world. I don't think we want to go there. For more information about coral reefs, their relationship with microbes, and their importance to our environment, please visit climateshifts.org and reefrelief.org.
ASM Press has published three books that may be of interest to marine scientists. High Pressure Microbiology, Physiology and Biochemistry of Extremophiles, and The Biology of Ebrios. You can find these online at eStore.asm.org.